what's up it's swamp back for another tutorial okay in this tutorial I'm going to show you some stuff about vectors and what you can do with them and how you can use them I've been experimenting with them a lot so let me just show you like a basic what a vector is and then we'll go from there all right first thing is we're going to just look at a variable a variable data source it can equal a number so right here I just have a variable data source equals four okay so now what a vector is it looks like this now the vector is equal to more than one number the way you access those numbers is by the index and the index is the position in which these numbers are in the vector so this would be index 0 would be here then index 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 depending on how big your vector is it can have as many values as you want this one in particular right here I have has 10 values okay so if you wanted to get a number from a vector you would have to have the index of that number so in this case vector index 0 would equal 6 and then vector index 1 would equal 3 and vector index 2 would equal 9 and so on so that's how you access vectors is by the index so it, it tells you the value that is in the position in the vector so that's the confusing part about these is the index number is not the value it's the position in the vector okay so now knowing that let's go back to trials all right so now let me show you this vector here this vector here is I have it as size is 10 so it has 10 positions in it and fill with value I just put 0 in because I'm not using 0 so I'm gonna populate this vector with these set vectors so what I have here is an interval trigger set to one tick and only happen one time turn this on disable after impulses and make it one impulse and then I select it uh, sorry hook it to this first set vector and so what I'm doing is I'm setting the index of 0 to 6 the event target is going to be this vector here do the same thing continue to the impulse all the way through all 10 of these and uh, you know the vector size is 10 so I populate each uh, position with a number so index 1 is going to be 3 here index 2 is 9 index 3 is 5 and so on all the way up to index 9 being 10 now I just randomly scrambled these numbers just to kind of give you an idea of what how it reads the vector so you don't get confused with the indexes and the numbers because I'm using 1 through 10 we're going to use 0 through 9 as the indexes so anyway let me show you this I already built this just because it takes so long to put this stuff together but I'll explain it to you okay here I have just an explosion and a fire effect just set down 10 little sets of explosions and fire and each one has an effective event pointing to it this goes to the first one and so on so okay let's start up here now what I'm doing is I have a get vector event now here and the vector is the one that we had set before so we populated this vector with 10 numbers and then we're gonna get the numbers from that vector here in the get vector I'm using a variable for the index so select the index you pick value object and you connect it to the variable okay so now this variable it's just a regular variable data source I set it to minus one and I'll explain to you why in just a second okay so now here we have an interval trigger the interval is 60 I'm gonna bring it down to well actually let's leave it at 60 because I'll just show you how this works disable after 10 counts because we have 10 effects that we want to set off the event filter goes to this uh, set value event and it's set to increase by one after that it goes to switch filters now what we're gonna do is what happens here is the interval goes off and increases this by one this is negative one so it will now be set to zero and now we're gonna check the number at the index zero which this thing is gonna get that number from the vector and what that first number is gonna be is gonna be six because the index at the first position is six so we set that number there okay so now we're gonna use a switch filter here now how switch filters work are you set a comparison value so you set a value that you want to test against which is going to be 
the get vector event. So it's going to get that number. Then you want to test it to see if it equals the, the number in these case values. So case value one would be does it equal one? If it does, then you set your your event um, impulse to go to that event in this case. So you test for two to go to there and three and four. If it doesn't match any of these, then you select uh, default and you go to the next switch filter because we're going to keep testing all the way up to 10 positions. So here we're going to see if it equals five, six, seven, or eight, and then continue over and if it equals nine or 10. Now these numbers are the, these are the numbers in the vector, not the position of the vector. And so, and then if it doesn't equal anything, then just put a number that you're not looking for, which in this case is zero. So, okay, so what happens is this interval trigger goes off and increases this number to zero. This number will change to six because that's the first number in the vector. And then this, then the impulse goes to the switch filter, which will test to see what this number is. And this number is being six, so it's going to pass through this one because it doesn't equal one through four. And then it'll go here and it's going to equal six. So it'll be here. So it'll hit this target here, which will be this event filter and that will fire off that explosion. It will go through all 10 positions in the vector and fire off the explosions in this sequence, which will be the 6th one, the 3rd one, the ninth one, the 5th one, the 7th one, the 8th one, and so on. So that's how that works. That's how it reads the vector and that's how I'm using it. So we're going to come up here and show you how this works. So I'm going to go every 60 ticks, so every second. It sets off the explosion. So you see how that order was random. Now in a later tutorial I'm going to show you how to randomize this vector so you can have these same 10 numbers in here but you can put them in a different order every time the person restarts the track. That will make these explosions go off in a different order which if you're doing some sort of war or something like that it might be cool to have the explosions in different spots in different order. People might, uh, it, it, gives, it gives a little interest to a track when it's different every time you ride it. All right, let me show you another thing we can do with this vector. Um, here I have these spheres set up. I have 10 of them. Bring them down. Okay, so I have 10 of them. And then I have color events set up to them. Now I have all the spheres set up, are, uh, they're black, and I turn their emissions up a little bit. So we can, you know, see the color when it turns to a color. And then each color event is hooked to its corresponding sphere and it's set to be yellow. Okay, so now let me show you how we can loop through these, um, show you how we can loop through this vector. Now first what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a, an interval trigger. And then we're gonna need a generic filter. And we're gonna need a data source, variable data source. And we're going to need two set value events. Okay, now both of these set value events are going to be the target is going to be this variable. This first one is going to be increased by one. And the second one is going to be set to zero. Now, we're going to set up our impulse trigger. We're going to go one tick every 20 impulses. We're going to go to the filter first. Now this filter, what we're going to do is we're going to say greater than, first comparison value is going to be this variable. Second value is going to be eight. The true event is going to be set to zero. The false event is going to be increased by one. Now what this is going to do, oops, sorry about that. What this is going to do is it's going to count through 9, 0, 1 through 9. And so we're going to use that as the index for our vector. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the vector number. So we're going to use a get vector event. I'm s sorry, a get vector data source. The vector is going to be this vector here that we populated earlier. The index is going to be that variable that we're just running, running the count through 0 through 9. Now watch this. 
Now see, it grabs those numbers from the index. So the get vector is going and grabbing the numbers at the index number that corresponds with the number that is the variable. So, all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test against these, and we're gonna use so switch filters to test against these and light up the corresponding light with the number in the vector. So, let's grab a couple of filters. We need a switch filter, we're gonna need three of them, because each one can hold four values. So, that's eight, nine, and 10. All right, so now the first switch filter we're going to set up. Comparison value is going to be the get vector. First value is going to be 1, and we go to that first event. 2, second event, 3, third event, and 4, fourth event. And if it doesn't equal those four, then we go to the next filter by going on default. Now this default filter, I'm sorry, this one, for the comparison value is going to be the get vector. This is going to be 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then the default, if it doesn't equal those, it's going to go to the next filter. Now this filter is going to be 9 and 10. Our comparison value is the get vector. This is going to be 9, and this one's going to be 10. Now the other numbers don't matter. We're not looking for 0, so it's not going to ever find it. So we don't need to go any further. Now the interval here, what this, what's happening is this number, this vector, I mean this interval is hitting this filter, and it's testing the number to see if it's greater than 9, and if it is, it resets it back to 0, so we have a loop going. So we need to continue this impulse through here to these switch filters. So event filter is going to go to this first switch filter here. Now let me show you how this works. So you see it turns on the yellow on the lights, but it doesn't turn it off. So what we need to do is turn it off. So we're going to use another uh, color event. We're going to make the color black. And we're going to t the event targets are going to be all of them. Every one of these is going to turn black. This is just an easy way so we don't have to individually do it. Okay, so now we're going to need a delay event. I'm sorry, delay filter. I call everything an event. Okay, delay filter. Now, on this delay, we're going to go 10 because we went 20 with an interval above. So we'll go 10 with this. And it's going to go to that color event. Now, from each one of these color events, we need to go to that delay. So we'll just select them all. and take the event, the impulse, to the delay, and then it should turn them off. Now, you can do this for a lot of different things. This uh, particular one doesn't shuffle this vector. I'm gonna write another, uh, do another tutorial. I wrote a script that shuffles this vector. So it shuffles these numbers every time you start the track. So they'll be all in a different order. So every time you play, this lights would be coming on in a different order. Or if you were doing a skill game or something, you could do like a card game, like poker. You could have 52 cards in the deck and it could shuffle the deck and then it would deal the deck in order. Or you could do like a Simon Says game where it lights up a light and you have to push the button and correspond to the light. Every time you play the track, it would shuffle it so the Simon Says thing would be in a different order every time. It's pretty cool for stuff like that. There's a lot of things you could do with vectors. You just have to play around with it. So uh, this is what I know. This is what I'm using them with lately. I hope that this has helped you. And uh, just remember to have a good time. Keep on building. Thanks for watching.